church. Well, welcome this morning, or whenever you watch this, to Tree of Life School of Ministry. We're continuing our study on the virtuous woman experience. Those of you that are new to this, we uh, used to in the past, and most people still are, teaching the virtuous woman as to how to become a very good wife. And uh, then many times men listen to it to try to find out how to find a virtuous woman. And we have found out that we are already virtuous, all of us are. And Jesus' work made us that way, so we're enjoying this study. I want to take just a minute. I was up in uh, Wisconsin last week, and we met with a client up there from our, our company. And they grew up, or she particularly grew up in a Catholic church. And, you know, I'm always talking about how the then the Catholic church mistranslated our scriptures. And actually that church, uh, at that time, three Riberian priests came up with the doctrine of a rapture. And in my book on uh, Simple Answers to Difficult Questions explains that in detail. But that came from the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church grabbed hold of it. Much of what the church world believes today came from the Catholic Church. And it keeps being reinforced from Dake's Bible and different ones like that. Well, I found it interesting. This lady gave me a book. I really don't want to say the name of it because I don't want to get a bunch of people to get it and read it. But her, her sister sent it to her. Uh, she came out of the Catholic Church several years ago, and her sister was concerned to her, so it said, uh, I'll just make act like it's Bob and Jeannie or something, but said to Bob and Jeannie, for your salvation, love your sister. Uh, that's what this book was for, is to try to get them close saved. And it's a, to me, it's a Catholic version of Left Behind, or the late, great planet Earth. And as I went through it, just to tell you the back of it, it says there's a warning it says, Our Blessed Mother says, What will come to pass is something so very great that it will exceed anything that has ever taken place since the beginning of the world. Hmm. Now that's interesting. I thought what Jesus did, the resurrection, was the greatest thing. And it said, The miracle will be God's majesty will be displayed in the most widely witnessed miracle of all times. Signs will be left in the sky. And didn't Jesus say it's an evil, adulterous generation that chases after signs? Mm -hmm. And then it talks about the chastisement will Satan's power will be broken by a series of catastrophics that will bring America and the world to her knees. And then as I go through here, I see more and more stuff, and it talks about how uh, one of the greatest miracles is when all people are going to realize that uh, Mary uh, is the Savior of the world, and, and Mary is going to bring salvation to the world from all this catastrophic events. And it just goes on and on and on. So this is just another thing to confirm that this stuff has still been taught. This is a book that was just released, just recently, and it's going through the Catholic Church, and it shows all the pictures of, of Mary in a, um, what was it, on a rose petal. They found a rose petal, and it's a perfect image of Mary with her hands out and uh, rays of light shining through them, which you know somebody photoshopped that on there, and all these things, and that's the signs, and they're chasing signs and wonders, and it's just sad. So the Catholic Church is still doing it, the Protestant Church is still doing it, the Charismatic Church is still doing it, and they're leading, keeping people in ignorance. And so I'm so glad that Father has chosen many people across this planet, including us, to equip us with truth so we can go out and set people, or make people free from this stuff, because it's just a, a damnable doctrine, mm -hmm. and it's keeping people living as non-existent. They're terrified. And I, I, I thought by now a lot of this stuff was over with, but they're still publishing this stuff. And they're expecting horrible things to happen in the world today that's going to bring people to know the Lord. And I don't think that's what brings people to know the Lord. Our Bible says it's the goodness of God yeah. that yeah. does that. Amen. So, <clears throat> continuing with our study, I want to back up just a little bit, kind of reintroduce what we ended up with last week. We were talking about, Donna, what page is that on? You looked it up. Uh, 7 of 19. Okay, yeah. page 7 in your notes. We talked about the, the thing that it says about this woman and that she not only works with wool, which picture the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, or the death side of the cross, but flax also, and flax simply was the word that meant linen. Linen speaks of righteousness. So our righteousness took place when? When did that take place? It took place in Jesus' resurrection, correct? When he was resurrected, or Christ the new man was resurrected, then all were made righteous right then. So. The wool speaks of the lamb, sl uh, lamb slain, and the flax speaks of the lion. The Bible states that in the kingdom age, which we're in, the lion and the lamb lay down together. We've seen all those pictures before. And yes. People think it's a literal lion and a literal lamb, and they're thinking there will be a day that lions won't eat lambs anymore, and 
you know, that probably will happen someday when everything's brought back to order. But that's actually talking about our mind of Christ, which has full understanding, is going to come into our, the, the brain and intellect is going to come into the union with that, and they're going to rest together as one. Mm -hmm. And we believe, I believe personally, that when that takes place, that's when we're going to experience that we're already redeemed and begin to live out of that. And people are beginning to see that already. Yes. Wanda wrote me a, a letter, emailed the other day, and it just blessed me. I forgot to bring it. I was going to read it. But she fell down and pretty hurt herself pretty good. You know, and her, hit her head and her many parts of her body and her ankle began to swell about twice the size that it was. And she just began to tap in and understand the isness of God. And that mm -hmm. I'm sure her spirit said, wait a minute, you don't have to give in to this. Mm -hmm. And the lady that came and checked on her, you know, Wanda said, I'm all right. And Wanda chose to lean to the spirit. And just within just a matter of minutes, the swelling began to go down. Glory. And Actually, I had gone shopping after I left there because I was taking my sister. Yeah. And she wanted to go shopping. She doesn't drive, so I take her everywhere. So we had walked for an hour. And I got home, and of course I was starving. And uh, it was at about 3 o'clock, I hadn't eaten since breakfast. And after that, I went over to sit down in the chair, and I said, Father, I need to draw on my spiritual resources. Right. And uh, I thought in my mind, how do I pray for this? Mm -hmm. yeah. And while I was sitting there, of course, I had my feet up, I was in my own fire, and I looked and saw that swelling go down. Yes. <laughs> See, that's, that's learning how to live out of that. Donna, would you check and see? Do you hear that noise? Yeah. Is that the fan over here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn it off then. Go ahead. That was awesome. Yeah, so it's it's really, it's that simple. It, when something presents itself to us, we, we need to allow the Spirit of God to arrest our attention and not let us give in to that. And I remember Bob Cosby years ago, Full Gospel Assembly, we didn't know any of this. But he fell down and broke his ankle He on a curb and he heard it snap twice. The bone cracked and he looked down there and he could see it pushing through the skin. It didn't go through it, but he saw it pushing. And he just said, wait a minute, I don't have time for this. And he, he just said, Lord, I need your help with this. I need this to be healed. And just instantly it all went back together and got up and walked away. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a big revival. It wasn't somebody. It was just he tapped in. And many, many people have tapped into and not understanding what they've tapped into. But we have understanding now. Yeah. And so it should become the normal part of our life. So we need the, 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 the brain to, to come together. I think that I believe the Holy Spirit in these lessons that we're going through. And I hear it all over the internet. People are just really gleaning from this virtuous woman. These other classes we're taking. And I believe it's just beginning to merge together where the two are going to be one. They already are one. But as far as the brain, it still has a lot of false information that's keeping it from living as one. And one of the biggest ones is we're always trying to do something about our problems instead of just feeding. There's always that temptation up there because we still recognize where we're weak in many areas. And we, we, we well, Lord, why don't you do something about this? I mean, or Lord, if this is true, why isn't this leaving? Well, we need to go back and count what has left. <laughs> yes. What has changed? Much more has left our brain and then we can even imagine. We've forgotten some of the stuff that we were involved in. Yeah. Amen? Oh. And so it's coming together. Uh, I think I left off reading in Proverbs 3, 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy brain, intellect, understanding, which we know it says heart, and that part of the heart is the brain, intellect, understanding, and awareness. And support oneself not with understanding that comes from the five sense realm and the intellect of the systems of man living as human. You can... Scratch that A out, actually, and put that in there by mistake. But So we don't want to put our trust in what's out there. I mean, we preach that to death, and it <coughs> still needs to be preached many times, but people are still putting their trust in the systems of the world. The systems of the world have proved that we can't trust them, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. I don't trust 401K. I don't yeah. trust the stock market. I'm not against them. They have a right to be there. I don't trust corporations to take care of me. They have a right to have their corporation, but I don't trust them. I'm thankful for them. Without corporations, many people wouldn't have jobs. But I'm not going to put my faith in them that if I work 20 years from them, I'll be able to retire very wealthy. You know, and I'm going to have my health insurance benefits and all that. That's something that I have to learn wisdom and knowledge from my father, learn what to do, and realize that he's my supply. 
And does that mean we don't work? No. Does that mean we don't put money back for savings? No, I want to do that. Does that mean we don't have uh, health insurance? There's nothing wrong with having health insurance. Mm -hmm. you know. But I believe the Father can show us through our spirit how to get these things and, and not have to depend on other people to provide them for us. But the greatest health insurance that we can have is learn to live out of our spirit mm -hmm. and just not get sick, not need the bankers and all right. that. So mm -hmm. the mind of Christ, and I wrote they on there, This you guys had the first edit. I've sent out the new one. If everybody, if you don't have it, let me know. I can email it to you because Carol has been editing these for me by Elaine and Dick's editing other things. But the mind of Christ or our spirit or the brain or an intellect enters into a, an agreement not fighting. And that's the big thing that we need to really understand. I, I remember years ago, Pastor John Cahill saying, Cahill saying the church is not a fuss, it's not a fight, and it's not a funeral. Most of my life it's been a fuss. I grew up in a church where there's a lot of fussing going on, a lot of wrong things taking place, and that produced a lot of fighting. Then I grew up in church where it was a funeral all the time because we were always trying to crucify our flesh, right? Always trying to deal with something. So it was dying to things. And I taught this as a young man. We just need to die to that, you know? Well, I was a hypocrite because I didn't know how to die with a, my vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I didn't know how to die to my own problems. And yet I would get up there and tell people, you just need to die to that. Well, how do you die to that unless you just take a gun and shoot yourself in the head? And long story short, uh, much of that teaching has produced that in people's lives where they finally just gave up and took their life. So we come to a place of rest and we receive in a position of rest the engrafted and receive logos or the word of creator spirit which is able to rescue one's brain from the wrong information and the desires. That's what it meant when it said save your soul. That part of the soul was talking about your brain and your intellect. It needed to be rescued. And we still need rescue from stuff. Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. You know, fear can be very uh, prominent in most people's lives today because things don't look good out there. You know, but that's why we have to receive with meekness, come to rest and receive that grafted word that says, you don't have to fear. I'm not the author of fear. I'm the author of peace. Even though there's bombs going off in Israel and I pray for them and Hamas and all those places and all the stuff going on with our government, we can still say that we can be at peace because yeah. he's our peace. He's who's going to give me peace. So there's one side of redemption which did away with whose humanity used to be, and then there's a side of, of, of redemption that literally woke man back up to who they really were, but it had gone dormant. It was laying dormant. And so it produced a righteousness in us. So one, uh, one, one turns, uh, what, what did I put there? <laughs> one <laughs> sin turns into sin world. into wool. wool. One turns sin into the wool. Uh, the sin literally became the wool, if you would. Uh, Jesus dealt with that. Jesus swallowed that up. And then the other turns unrighteousness to righteousness. I wrote that right, but I, I put an S on there. So one, the S goes there, doesn't it? One, one of them, which is the, the uh, flax, turns it, the wool turns it into wool, which is the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. And then the flax turns it unrighteousness into righteousness. Mm -hmm. Jesus took unrighteous people and turned all into righteousness. Am I making that sense proper for you? <laughs> I put my notes on here. I put need to correct that, and I wasn't thinking how I needed to correct it. But I type turns, and it's actually turned T U R N E D. That's what it should be. So Revelation nineteen seven. I think that's the last verse we read, uh, read last week. It says, "Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory." For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife was ma has made herself ready. How did she do that? We've talked about this before. How did she make herself ready? She fed, right? Mm -hmm. She fed on the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And verse 8, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, a clean and bright, which is our righteousness. For the fine linen right there is the righteous acts of the saints. So literally, everything we do, we do righteous. That's why I pray for our country and our leaders that they would do righteous things. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I was at a banquet with my company, Service Corp International. Donna remembers that we were down in uh, Texas somewhere. And they, unbeknownst to me, asked me to get up and pray before the beginning of the meeting. And I'd never seen them do that before. But they honored me to get up and pray. And I thought, well, Lord, what am I going to pray? You know, all the corporate boards here and everything. And one thing I did after I gave thanks for them, I prayed. It, just, it was, just came out boldly that... Father would cause these men and women to make righteous decisions that would bless our, our customers and bless our employees. 
And I got a lot of comments out of that from the corporate board. They appreciated that and they never thought of that before. But that's what we need because our actions should be produced out of righteousness. So the flax or linen speaks of righteousness. Then let's go through Revelation chapter 5.1. I'm going to read this. This has quite a bit of scripture in it, so I'm going to be doing just a lot of reading in this class, in this session. It was interesting when I translated the book of Revelation uh, with what the Lord showed me, that all these scriptures were in my lesson that I prepared, you know, that we've had for many, many years. These scriptures were, were references to this study. And so, again, this was just something the Lord prepared that it would go along with these future studies we're doing. Now, this is John speaking, and he said, And I perceived with my spirit eye, and understood in my spirit mind, within these messenger pastors, the everlasting anointing to explain and teach the things of Jesus the redemptive work, empowered by the at-rest Christ's lifelike glory within. And see, you can't do it unless you're at rest, can you? Mm -hmm. That's why people preach all the wrong stuff and condemnation and judgment because they're not at rest themselves. I viewed as it were an innumerable people seen as a book. The book I saw had words written within and even on the back. The writings within were of the present condition of man after their resurrection from the death, hell, and grave of living as human. The words written revealed what was added to man during the great operation of Father God, made alive and raised up to living in or out of Father's spirit realm being at perfect rest, or union, or one with Him. The words written on the back side reveal that which was removed in Father's great operation, the end of the old, worn-out, lower realm life, pictured by the crucifixion of all humankind, the deaths and the burials of that false way of life. Now see, when I was writing this, immediately Father brought me back to uh, 1 John 3.8. He, he reminded me of uh, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel where it says, Son of man, show the house the house. And if they be ashamed, show them the comings in thereof and the goings out thereof. So this is the same thing here because the comings in thereof was the revelation of the finished work of the cross and the goings out thereof was everything that was antichrist, if you would. Okay? So, uh, the result being what Adam's choice to separate himself from his father produced was loosed, made none effect, brought to naught, vanished away, and made void. Each of these messenger pastors as the voice of one, could speak clearly of the all-inclusive work of Jesus' passion. However, I saw, as it were, seven seals over their mouth, which are understood to represent seven vital understandings. In other words, they couldn't speak of them. Remember the dream I used to have that gum was just always trying, I couldn't get it out of my mouth, and our paper clips, there was just wads of paper clip that as I would pull them out there would be more coming and a lady told me there's you there's an understanding inside of you but you don't understand it yet so you can't speak of it that made very much sense that to me at the beginning that was of the, our ministry yeah the very beginning of my ministry way before I met brother Garner that was going on and then I had that, that dream. right after because I remember her doing that tell us what it was uh -huh. and then right after that I had that dream with the rods of iron coming out which yeah. means the Word of God with strength. And that's all of us. It's not just me. It's all of us. And we're all messenger pastors. Right? Mm -hmm. We are. Now, there are people out there that are not. They should be, but they're not. And it's not because we're somebody special. It's just because we came to the end of ourselves. We finally did, and we woke up, and, and God chose. All I, all I, I tell people all the time, they ask me, well, why did God choose you? And I said, I must have been foolish. <laughs> that's all I know because <laughs> it says he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise so there's, there's no reason why he chose me I wish there was <laughs> you're hard well there might be a reason we don't yeah, know we just don't know yet, y'all can't see it can probably because you? you're stubborn and you need yeah, to yeah stubborn as a mule <laughs> So each of these messenger pastors of the voice of one could speak clearly of the all-inclusive work of Jesus' passion. However, I saw, as it were, seven seals over their mouth, which I understood represent seven vital understandings. There was a need to understand what each individual seal pictured before any man could perceive and apprehend what these messenger pastors were empowered to speak, explain, teach, and preach accurately. The seals broken open were the explanation of three separate understandings of what was behind them, and three separate understandings of their present condition, and the seventh seal being opened is the resulting understanding of all men having been made righteous. See, seven means what? Perfection, completion. And maturity, and completion. Maturity. So to me, once the, the six seals are open, then you get the all-inclusive understanding of that. We at Tree of Life Ministries 
have gone through these teachings since 1996 and have really ground them out. Brother Garner taught us a lot. And as the progression went on, we began to understand it wasn't for just people that walked the aisle and said a prayer. It was for everybody. Now, we didn't know it back in the beginning. You know, just like we always thought that we, uh, the mind was carnal and we had a carnal mind. And so as we grow and we mature and perfection and completion and understanding comes, then the seventh seal is broken. And now we know it's for everyone. We know much more than we did 10, 15 years ago. I can't imagine what we're going to know 10 years from now. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. But I really believe, I believe that we have, I've talked to Kay about it a lot. I believe we pretty much tapped into the truth. Yes. And I think what we're going to see is just more and more pictures that's going to help us to explain it. Clear, yes. Clear, because once it's all inclusive, there's nothing else for it to be, is it? Mm -hmm. But it is awesome. So, uh, let's see. And the seventh seal being opened is the resulting understanding of all men having been made righteous, or that means right with Father God, by Father's great and mighty work. Not by any other way are you made righteous. Right. Well, religious systems need to hear that. They're all your rules, your regulations. That's not going to make anybody righteous. Literally, it'll make them feel unrighteous. Right. Just like the law, they should have said we can't do it. So we're aware that the book written within and without is not some giant book, uh, physical bound book out there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. I was taught all my life that when I die, I'm going to stand before an angel and there's going to be a giant book and he's going to look for our name there. And in my opinion, I felt like it must have a lot of holes in it because it was there, then it was erased, and it was there, then it was erased, and it was there, then it was erased. <laughs> yeah. You know, we saw all those horrible plays that they did that, and the book wasn't there, so the person would be dragged into what they thought was hell. Mm -hmm. So it's not a physical book, it's we're the book. We're the, Paul said that we're the epistles read and known of all men. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 3 2 says that you are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, but on tablets of body shape. When I looked that up, that's what that actually wow. said. Tablets of body shape. That is of the thoughts and feelings of the brain and the intellect. So this book does not speak of a natural book. It speaks of people in which there's a message that's been written. Mm -hmm. And the fact is the message, message is in everyone because Scripture says that we have an unction of the Holy One. Hello, Robin. And we know all things. So that means everybody, not just good little Christians. Everybody has a mind of Christ, but many of them are, are dead to that and they have no understanding. Okay, now Hebrews 8.10, we can see this again. For this, the contract that I will make with my family of Israel and all his descendants, age after age, after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws, the gospel, in their deep thought faculty, their mind, understanding, and imagination, and inscribe them in their thoughts and feelings of the brain, and I exist to them, Creator, Spirit, Father, and they exist to me, my own populace, which means inhabitations of me, and I think that's pretty cool. And that's exactly what that scripture said in the Greek. He exists in us as Creator, Spirit, Father, and we exist to Him as His populace. It's where He lives, where He dwells. Wow. So Father writes His Word and His laws in our consciousness, which is our brain, our intellect. And how is He doing that? He's doing that as we lean to the Spirit, as we, as we listen to equipped ministers that can grind the Word out and make it palatable. A priesthood that has some light on perfection. Mm -hmm. Not trying to teach you how to become perfect, but we're shining light on the fact that you already are perfect. Every person that ever walked down an aisle to go quit, quote, get saved, they were perfect before they ever were convicted and ever walked down that aisle, they already were. And I so enjoy when people come. We don't do altar calls here. If we sense that people needs to come down like that, we will. But we always ask people to come down. But it's really awesome. And in the last several years, I've had that happen at Tree of Life. And here where somebody's come down to, quote, get saved. And it was so awesome to get to tell them, guess what? You already are. Already are. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Everything that you think makes you a, 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 a sinner or whatever, that's already been forgiven. Everything that you've been taught you need to do, Jesus did it. Let us teach you now. Let us take you to the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread and show you how you were, that was stripped from you and you were made completely void and nude of that kind of lifestyle. You're not who you thought you were. Right. That's a great way to teach. That's awesome. Mm -hmm doesn't leave any condemnation at all. So we are the book and there's a message hid, hidden in our mind of Christ. The whole book of Revelation is the unveiling, it's the uncovering, 
and the revealing of a person. And it's, I, I believe it reveals the re redemptive work of Jesus Christ, but I believe it reveals the in Christ of man. It shows us who we are. Yeah. Yes. And all the pictures that the sun clothed woman, it's just like this book here, they say the sun clothed woman is Mary. It's Jesus' mother, and, and, and she's coming to destroy uh, the devil. That's her job, the dragon. And they say that's a devil, and they say that. But I tell you, we're the sun clothed woman. We're, we're the bride of Christ. We have a crown of 12 stars, and it's a covenant mentality of six steps to the throne, and our union with that is crucified, died very quick, and raised and seated. And it says that that woman prevails over the dragon. And what is the dragon? It's religion and tradition. The dragon is your brain, your intellect filled with false understandings. And the woman, the mind of Christ, the body of Christ overcomes that. So John stated in the book of Revelation, the book is written on the inside and on the back, and it's sealed with seven seals. Now, Revelation 5, 2. Robin, were you able to get all those files I emailed you? Or, yes. There was a lot of them. Don't be overwhelmed. Just, just, you know what? It's just like getting a book. My wife can buy a book with 500 pages and read it in three or four days. But just take your time and don't get in a hurry. Thank you so much. Donna understands all of it and she can help you with it. Oh, Donna, me see. What are you laughing at? Okay. In addition... I became aware of a mighty and ability and understanding messenger pastor proclaiming as it were an illumining and revelatory voice who is worthy to open man up to the knowledge and understanding of the life of God. And remember the King James it says who's worthy to open the book and we know the book is man. So who's worthy to do that uh, up to the knowledge and understanding of the life of God being within one with them. Who is worthy to explain and teach every aspect of Father God's mighty work? Now, what do we say? Who can rise up as the virtuous woman? It's the same thing. So, being that I am, Jesus, removed the old worn-out way of life and placed within every man, woman, boy, and girl, my light, life, and glory, been his or her life source. I became aware that no dust realm, carnal work of man, could open mankind up to experience the Christ life of God within them. Right. Nor see, be aware, look, perceive, and behold in and of themselves that he has always resided within them. All. I understand that. I understood that man <coughs> conceived defective religious rules and works was not able to open up in understanding the redemptive work of Jesus, which could awaken the Christ life within every man, woman, boy, and girl. Neither could carnal ways and teachings produce an ear to hear and an eye to see, perceive, be aware of the light, life, and glory within and upon man as Father God's most holy place, temple dwelling. And I'm telling you, family, that is so plain. It's a fact. Most of us have been in every kind of religion you can think of in this church. We can name many lists, and none of them has been able to open the book up. None of them has taught anything. I, I, I haven't talked to one person that grew up in a denomination that was taught who they were in Christ. The, the best we got was we were sinners saved by grace. Right? That's about the best we got. So that meant we still had a ticket to heaven someday, but we're still going to be sinning all the days of our life. And so no man whose breath in his nostrils could do that. The message that we are, no man can open that up in any works of righteousness. When it talks about man, it says it's talking about a man whose breath is in his nostrils, a man who goes by the sense realm. But see, we're not that kind of man. We're not anthropos, which was Adam. We are Christ, the new man. And we've been given understanding, and so we can open people up to these truths. Then Revelation 5, 4. I, John, begin to weep. How many of you ever cried like that? You know, God, when are you going to change me? You know, I don't like who I am, and I agree with what the preacher says about me. And God, take this from me, and God, do this. And that, that's that weeping there. And so I began to weep for the reason that I understood the life, light, and glory of Father God dwelled within me, but no man could tell me how to live out of that, which I possess. And I'm telling you, family, I, I always remember sitting under ministry and saying, you need to do this and you need to do that, and then I even became that. But they never told me how. So I tried to copy them. I, Billy Gibson, I will never forget, Brother Hibbert loved Billy Gibson, and he would always tell us about how Billy Gibson does this stuff. And one day he was talking about how Billy began to lay prostrate on the floor and pray four or five hours a day. And what a glorious thing that was. So guess what I tried to do? Lay on the floor and pray three or four hours a day. You know, I, I wanted somebody to open the book. And I thought, well, if it's working for them. But you know what? It wasn't working for them. No. 
It really wasn't. I'm not saying that was bad. It's good to pray. It's good to worship the Lord. But I was always, I never heard anybody tell me what to do. All I heard is what I need to do. Right? And that didn't help one bit. So that's what John was saying here. So, uh, it, let's see, where did I stop? So one of the messenger, messenger pastors gave explicit instructions to me. Do not cry. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work anymore. No. Crying and whining and pleading and, and, and testimonies, which means tell your testimony about it for a while. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that, Donna? That's what a testimony is. You stand up, you tell your test, and you moan about it for about an hour or so. <laughs> he said, stop your crying and dead works, which are religious self-efforts. Behold, be aware and perceive the chief one being Jesus the Messiah, he being the only story. I tell you, I believe this with all my heart, if you're going to give up and, and give any kind of testimony, your testimony needs to be Christ and Him crucified and what that means to you. Amen. It doesn't need to be, well, I used to be a drug addicted, I used to be a prostitute, I used to be this, and look what God did for me. Well, guess what? He did it for everybody. Yes. Now, I'm glad He did it for you, but your testimony needs to be the story of Jesus Christ and what He did. Acts 1 will tell you that. Yes. So... He being the only story, him being the root of David, the book, which is an innumerable many-membered one man, is our open by way of man hearing with his or her spirit ear, and by seeing with his or her spirit eye, the understanding of the story of his mighty work of redemption. Furthermore, the understanding and truthful revelation of him is the means of success. Right there, that's how we're going to make it, is understanding wisdom and knowledge. And you would not believe how many people on the internet are saying, we don't need any more understanding, we don't need knowledge, we just need to believe what he did was enough and go and enjoy the world. Well, you're not going to change. <laughs> so, uh, the means of success in opening you and this innumerable people you saw as a book, and the unveiling and the meaning of the seven seals that will bring great understanding to all people. So can you see again the lion and the lamb uh, lying together in the throne of your spirit? That's what's taking place. You can, the mind, and I put in there, so cross that out. The mind of Christ and the brain, the intellect become one. And again, there's no more warring whatsoever. Hallelujah. Revelation 5, 7. Barbara, do you know what page we're on? Have you Nine. found it? Nine. Nine. Yes. Nine. The lion and the lamb. The lamb is, a, is a Jesus slain, or all slain. Okay, he was the sacrifice. The lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the victorious work of Jesus Christ. And so that needs to come together in our mind and our understanding, where the, the, the brain, the intellect comes into union with the spirit, the mind of Christ, and they come at rest with one another. Right now, they've been at war with one another. And that's why we say, if you say I'm sick, that's Antichrist. If you say I'm poor, that's Antichrist. If you say I'm dumb, I, I can't learn, whatever it is, that's Antichrist. Because the Bible says that you can do all things through the Christ life that strengthens you. Not through Jesus up there somewhere strengthening us. Not that, that Father God's not involved in it. But you have the very life of God inside of you, which is Christ, and it's your life source. So anything that you say, I need, then you're denying that you have all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we have to change our profession, okay? Now, I'm not saying if a doctor comes to you and tells you that you have cancer cells in you that you call him a liar. You do have cancer cells in you, but it's how you accept that. Thanks for the report, but I, I believe that that doesn't belong to me, and I'm going to begin to speak life to that. And then you listen for the direction of the Father. You listen for a word that will come at, at rest, and you may hear, go ahead and go to the doctor. Or you may hear, no, you don't have to, I'm going to deal with that. Or, you know, by, with your faith. But see, you have to have faith in the finished work of the cross. You can't have just faith in your faith. There's a big difference. You have to know that you know. And so no preacher should ever tell somebody, no, don't go to the doctor. That's got to be between you and your understanding the finished work of the cross. Does that make sense? Yes. So when they lie down together, the lion and the lamb, then the brain has total understanding, and then we live as the full manifestations of an in Christ and Son of God. The body is redeemed, everything takes place. I believe that with all my heart. And I don't believe it's just going to be me, and I don't believe it's just going to be Elaine, or it's going to be, it's going to be a corporate body. Because if it was just one, then Paul could have stayed. But Paul knew if it was just him, they would have worshipped him. And Jesus knew that if he stayed, 
everybody would have to get to him for everything. Yes. We'd all be just trying to get to him, and how often do you think you'd get to see him? <laughs> you'd be lucky if it's once in your lifetime. Yes. You know, so it's, it's a corporate body. You're on TV. <laughs> By DVD. Yeah. We can send out a bunch of DVDs, and you can touch the TV screen. Not making fun of that. That's how people have received their healing that way, too. Yeah. Yeah. Revelation 5, 7. In addition, in seeing, I saw the same sight I saw earlier when I beheld these quickened and understanding messenger pastors as golden candlesticks. I saw and perceived they had perfect understanding of God's creative work, and they each possessed the life, character, nature of Father God within and upon them. They were mightily mature in understanding and knowledge which came from their tuning in their spirit ear and spirit eye to learn of Jesus' redemptive work as the slain lamb of God, him as all, being the one and only sacrifice acceptable to God. Furthermore, they possess perfection of understanding and perfection of perception, and each one's seeing and understanding came from that which Father spoke and revealed to them by each being in harmony to the mind of Christ within them, Function out of rest, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and a reverential respect to the Lord. Does anybody know what those represent? The seven what? Spirits of God. That's right. Who said spirits of God? That's right, Don. Mm -hmm. You get a start that. Seven spirits of God. Mm -hmm. That which they have been shown, they are to explain and teach to all people this age and the ages to come, world without end. Hallelujah. Now, who are you going to explain it to? People that come to you and ask the correct question. Right, yes. Remember last Sunday, I told you guys that almost every divine appointment I have on airplane are women. Yeah. And I said, I'm praying that men will start asking. Well, guess what? I get on the plane to go to Dallas Monday, I sat with a young man, and no more than five minutes went by. What do you do? You know, and, and, and they, the then I told him, and he got the right question started coming. And for about 40 minutes on that flight, it just poured, and he lives in Norman, Oklahoma. Thank you. Him and his wife and two kids. And he's very interested. He's reading on the web page now. And then I get on a plane in Dallas, and there's another man sets by me. A two-and-a-half-hour flight to Atlanta. And I'm telling you, within just seconds, he said, what do you do? And I mean, and then I talked to him about it, and he began to ask the other questions for two and a half hours. I tried to stop, and he wouldn't let me stop. I was worried that I was boring him, because you know me, it just gets going. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't quit. He said, I don't want you to quit. Praise and so God. it was men. <laughs> so, you, you know, Thank you, Lord. all we got to do is yes, ask, yes. and it shall be added unto Thank you. Because yes. men need to, in fact, the guy going to Atlanta, he, I told him what, that the, oh. both of them, I told him that you guys were the answer to our class's prayer Sunday. Thank you, and the one to Atlanta said, well, we men need this. We need to teach it to our children. Mm -hmm. yes. So very exciting. Yes. So it's for everyone. Okay, I continue to see the understanding of the Lamb as being slain. In the minds of them whom I saw as a book, being an innumerable people, each were apprehended and amazed by the result of the marvelous redemptive work of he, Jesus, remaining at rest in man. Being amazed at what these innumerable people heard from these messenger pastors by responding to the plea of the Spirit and the Bride, and literally that should say the Spirit and the Bride. The Scripture the says bride. the Spirit and the Bride are saying come, but it's literally the Spirit and the Bride that's saying that. Come and see. They corporately worshipped as one voice with eyes wide open, seeing Father Christ in man, possessing truthful understanding of the sacrifice, excuse me, sacrificial lamb, which are spoken by most holy place priests. These truthful and understanding, when heard, will make all men free. Everyone has been set free. However, when one is taught and explained truthful understanding, he or she will be made free. Moreover, after understanding the truthful understanding of redemption, they sing a new song. Now, what song is that represented as? The song of the Redeemer. The song of Moses. Mm -hmm. The song of Moses that was sang, and then it's in the book of Revelation too. Yeah. But with respectful and honoring celebration of the great and marvelous story, saying, You are worthy to change my life by opening up these seals yourself. For you, in Jesus, was slain, and have roused all mankind from lying as non-existence, from disease, from obscurity, inactivity, ruins, living in the state of being tuned down to living in and out of the spirit of the day within as you and as your sons. You did this by the precious blood of the Lamb, this whole thing's a song, which freed all people of every generation, past, present, and future, world without end. And we have been made of him most holy place priests and kings that we shall reign in perfect rest on this planet. Yes, glory. 
And I became aware of and heard in my spirit illuminating and thundering voices sounding as the voice of one. And this is many member men. Yes, being spoken through an innumerable number of people coming from every direction and all around the messenger pastors and those who responded to the spirit in the bride saying, come and see. The numbers of those voices were millions times millions times millions of millions an immeasurable number of Father's creation worshiping Father, worshiping Him. That's when you translate that out. The, the Hebrew and the, they, and the Greek, they had no number for million. They, they put thousands times thousands times thousands, but literally it was millions. They were singing. Only He receives the credit and admiration. So they're singing the same song that these messengers sang. For the reason being, this great and marvelous work remains for all, eternally, age after age after age, world without end. What he did is trustworthy and worthy of putting one's entire being in life in the trust of bless his holy name. In addition, every person dwelling in the heavenly realm, apart from his or her earth body, that's talking about our loved ones that have gone on, and every person dwelling in body on the planet of every nation and every race, from the beginning age to the present age and ages to come, world without end, and all that give audience to and have ears to hear themselves, that which concerns the truth of the marvelous work of Father God, or Jesus, they sang the same song, the same story. Only He receives the credit and admiration for the reason being His great and marvelous work, power remains for all, eternally, age after age, world without end. What He did is trustworthy, and worthy of putting one's entire being in life in the trust of, bless His holy name. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, family, everyone's going to do it. And they're not going to do it just before they're cast into hell. No. I always hear people say, well, the Bible says every knee shall bow, so if you don't bow now, you'll, you'll bow just before you go to hell. Oh, no. You're going to confess that He's Lord, and He's going to throw you into hell. I've heard that many times. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the messenger pastors agreed that what Jesus had done is trustworthy, and worthy of putting the trust of one's well-being in, and those who had come to see and hear this great and mighty work being taught and explained fell down Hallelujah. and worshipped. Yes. See, the lamb slain opens the book. It is the death of the lamb. The lamb slain is open. It removes the seals. In Revelation chapter 6, you see the first five seals, which we're going to get into here. But I want to tell you something. You will not experience life and life abundantly presently until you understand the lamb slain. Yes. It really saddens me that some of my brethren out there, not a lot, but I hear it all the time, they're sick of the death side. There was a posting for one of my minister friends not too long ago on Facebook and said, there's much more to redemption than the death side of the cross. Well then why is it the Apostle Paul spent 90% of his time talking about crucified, died, and buried? Yep. Because 99% of the people don't understand it. That's right, and it yeah. takes a lot to understand. Yes. So if you want to be a life teacher, all you're going to be is a proclaimer. Yes. And you're going to have good cheerleading sessions, and it's going to be like going to a pep rally, and people are getting all excited and everything, but when they go home, they're not going to feel righteous because you're not teaching them how they were made righteous. Right. It's, I mean, it's one thing to say that you're righteous, but to explain it to me? That's when I really realize I am righteous, and it's because what Jesus did, not because of my work. I no longer measure myself anymore. Amen. Right. I, 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 you know, I still struggle with things in my life, but you know what? I continually, when the accuser comes like that, I just say, so I am redeemed. It's the blood of the Lamb, and there's nothing I can do to separate me from the love of God. Now, if I continue on in those things, I can have a perception of separation, but I, I even know that that's a lie. That's true. Right. Yeah. And sometimes there's that perception. Monique wrote something the other day, and I, I wrote her back, and she said she had this feeling of being all alone. And I wrote her back, I said, Monique, you know better than that. You're the, you're the temple of the Most High God. How can you be alone? God's dwelling yes. within you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know what it is. I've had it too. You're sitting in your, you know, year after year, and you're, in front of your computer and nobody's saying come teach me no and you've got a heart to go that that can feel alone but i reminded her though that that's a lie you're not alone Amen. you're you're always uh, filled with god's life and you're with us mm -hmm. maybe you're four states away or but you're still with us we're still one yes. and we got to draw from that knowledge and besides that she has an influence in her family and yes. friends that are around her whether she i mean she we all do 
Yes, we you do. know, we all have, even if it's if it's not the world, even if it's not going to minister, you know, it's our it's, world. yeah, our world. Like and Butch, those, Butch taught that, that going to your world. That's right. That can make a difference. Amen. Now, Dick and Elaine have ministered to mailman, ministered to, to, to <laughs> workers that come to their house, I mean, and all of you have. That That's the real ministry is one-on-one. -on -one. It's it's awesome to be able to get up and preach to crowds, and it's but the real ministry is one on one, where you can take somebody, you can mentor them, and you can help them, and you can bring them to this knowledge. And you don't ever have to bring them to church. We'd hope they would come be part of us, but you can be their church, right there in your home. So let's go to seal number one. Seal number one is what the white horse, and we see pictures all the time. Particularly TBN is really good about that putting an antichrist on a white horse. Well, that has nothing to do with this at all. I can tell you this, though. The white horse people have been antichrist because we are the white horse. Yes. Jesus pictures the white horse, but he comes in this earth riding in us. Mm -hmm. White is what? Righteousness, yes. right? And horses are always pictured as men. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 1. I continued to see in my vision when Christ, Holy Spirit, opened up and revealed the understanding of the first of the seals. I heard in every sense part of my body, as it were, a tone of brilliant enlightenment given to show me something, as it were great thundering coming out of the first of the quickening and understanding messenger pastor saying, pay attention to that which I reveal to you. I can't tell you how many times I want to stand up there in that pulpit and say, please pay attention. How many times have I said, I want you to, in your mind, come up on the front row. You know, front row people get a lot more than back row people do. Because they're distracted back yes. there. You know, we can't see their eyes, so we don't know that they're sleeping or awake. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to go take my pulpit and go halfway down and preach to the people in the back. But pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say because this is important. What does Butch say every Sunday he preaches? This could be the most important sermon you've ever heard in your life. He's saying, pay attention. Therefore, I became keenly aware of and beheld Jesus the Christ man during this earth walk ministry, being righteous, pure, and every bit holy. He being the messenger instrument of the great covenant of God was the champion of Father God's great redemptive work himself. He successfully destroyed, made void, and brought to naught all that produced and hindered humanity from living as in Christ the sons of God. So this white horse represents the perfect and the pure and the righteous holy earth walk of Jesus Christ. It is the Christ nature. That's what you have today. You're perfect, you're pure, you're holy. Jesus said, all are holy, but few choose. That word saint is holy or set apart. All are holy, but few choose. In other words, they don't choose to live that life, mainly because they don't know that they can, and mainly they don't know that they're holy, because the Catholic Church translated it, many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah. And you know what? You're probably not in the many. <laughs> that's how it's been taught all these years from all the Protestant church. But that's not what it said. <coughs> so, it is the Christ nature and life riding on the vehicle of unsinful man, a righteous man. Jesus said, which of you convinces me of sin? So after his ride was complete, which was his earth walk, then what did he wear? He wore a crown. And with this crown, he enacted a victory. The crown was the crown of thorns, right? Mm -hmm. And the crown... Uh, a crown always represents a mentality, something around your head. The, the woman with a 12 uh, star crown, it's a covenant. So Jesus had a crown which is a mentality which was confusion. He bore the confusion of all humanity. Everything that was placed in their brain, he bore that and that's, he wore that in his victory when he defeated the death, the hell, the grave of any human. When did he do that? He did that in his resurrection. So he had to die as humanity to take into himself everything that Adam's choice brought into him. He could not have been a sinner himself, though. He could not have committed sin, and he never did. I read, I read something on the Facebook the other day, and they were trying to say some... Oh, actually, in here, this book right here, uh, was talk, I think it was this book, talking about how Jesus uh, probably had sex. You know, and the reason people don't want us to know that he had sex is, you know, and they just come up with all this stuff. And you've always heard that Mary Magdalene was his lover and, and all that. And they're, they're trying to say that he was a sinner. He was not. He did not miss the mark in one way whatsoever. And we already know in this study that Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute. Right. She was wrongly taught that way. 
Uh, she was just a woman like other women and other men that had an effect of Adam's fall. She could have had cancer. She could have had a mental illness, whatever. But when she came to Jesus and those other women, he made them whole. And they served them as long as he was there. And Magdal Mary Magdalene served him more than any of the other ones. Yes. And that's why he was special. Uh, you know, they made comments about him kissing her. Well, guess what? I kiss most of you, don't I? Yes. You know, I'm married to my woman, but I love you. You're my sisters. And I, and I kiss some men on the cheek. You know, Butch, we always kiss, you, kiss each other on the cheek. That means nothing. Paul said to greet each other with a holy kiss. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just ridiculous. He did not sin. He had to be not sinless. Bad. He was made to be sin. Yes. And how was he made to be sin? When he emptied himself out of the Godhead in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right then, he who was not human, he who was 100% God, 100% man, emptied himself out of the Godhead right then so he could draw all into him. And he didn't just draw all men because they added that, they put the word men. He drew everything into him that Adam had released. Everything. Sickness, disease, poverty in every realm of life. So accordingly, he rides this white horse, been a vehicle of humanity, without sin. They gave him the crown. You can read it in John 19, 2. And it's with that crown of thorns that he conquers. So the whole picture begins with him going to beat this thing. And he did. And still people are waiting for Jesus to come back and do something. I see it on Facebook all the time. He's coming any moment. It's proof positive. Obama was elected again. Jesus is coming back any moment. You know, it's proof positive. You know, when uh, Gorbachev was around and he had that red uh, discoloration in his face, it was proof that Jesus is coming back. And then they counted the number of Nixon and it was 666. It's proof he's the Antichrist. Jesus is coming back. I'm telling you, it's been going on for years. I love what Lynn Howe says. He said they come up and they say, whoops, thus said the Lord, it's next year, not this year. And they will keep doing it as long as you keep buying their books. They'll keep doing it. When we quit buying their stuff, and see, we're still buying and selling. That's what the book of Revelation talks about. We're still buying their stuff and we're still selling their stuff. So this whole picture begins with this. He, he wore this crown, speaking of his identification. And it was deeply ingrained confusion in the minds of men. Just like the truth is deeply ingrained in us today. And it's we don't have to go anywhere to get it. We don't have to go take five years of college and get a degree and all that. We just feed and we just feed and we just feed and... Literally, what we're, as we feed, it causes us to realize it's already inside of me. Yes. And guys, you're going, to start hearing, you're going to start hearing truth come in your dreams. Many, many times I've studied and I've not been able to come up with the answer. And then I, in my dreams, or I would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning hearing a voice. Or many, many times as I'm preaching, the truth comes. Because I don't think God wants us to think it's all just because of my study. No. No. Many times it's spoken to me, and I go, oh, wow, that's that aha moment. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I wish somebody would transcribe my tapes, because it would enlarge these books more. We need that ministry in this church. And I, I keep forgetting to announce it, but we need somebody to transcribe, uh, uh, transcribe some of Butch's teachings so we can put them in books. Particularly the one that he taught recently about where uh, Jesus added to their law. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Yes, we need those typed. Okay, so it's his identification with darkness and death. And he said in Luke 22, Now is the hour of darkness come. Mm -hmm. The great darkness was when he identified with all that. So still number two is what? The red horse. And that's the revealing of Jesus Christ made to be human and himself bearing the deaths. And when we put deaths, we're talking about of all humankind. Everybody... There was a, it's appointed once for man to die. Yes. Uh, it's appointed once for anthropos, man whose breath is in his nostrils to die. And so Christ offered himself once. Amen? So he died the death of everybody that was due a death. And that's why we put deaths there. And that judgment. So here's the seal, Revelation 6.3. Then when he revealed the understanding of that which the second seal veiled, I heard in the same manner the second of the quickened and understanding messenger pastor saying, Pay attention to that which I revealed to you. I beheld another aspect of Jesus' redemptive work. I saw Jesus in his earthwalk ministry becoming the federal head of the human race. He took within himself the death. Robin, do you know what federal head means? Okay. Federal head is, let's just say that I am Olympics. going to the Olympics and I'm going to be a runner for the 
I don't know, 60 meter run, whatever that is, and I win the gold medal, and you're watching me, what would you immediately say? We won. We won, right? Yes, we won. But you always say, we won, we won. Well, you didn't win, I won, but the reason I was your federal head, I did it for you. I did it as you. I'm your representative. So what Adam did, Adam was the federal head of the human race. Every, actually of mankind, and then when he chose or they chose to separate themselves from the knowledge of God, what they did affected everybody yeah. after them. Not just who was born then, but everybody born after them. His grandchildren's 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 grandchildren's, grandchildren's all the way to Jesus' is ready to work. So Jesus became <coughs> the last, the, the federal head of the human race. He did, he did it backwards. He identified with everything that they did, and he swallowed up and took away everything that Adam did. So in his resurrection, Christ, the new man, was the federal head of a new creation being. So everything Adam did affected everybody, but much more what Jesus Christ did affected everybody. It went all the way back to the beginning. Oh, Brother Garner used this example. Uh, Robin, you, I'm sure you've seen a tape reproducer, cassette tape re reproducer. And so what they do is they put the master in there, and then er what's in the master goes into the tape. Well, what Jesus did is he got into a giant uh, reproducer, but it went backwards. All the distorted, messed up tapes were put in there, and all of it went into the master tape. Huh. That master tape was destroyed, done away with. Mm -hmm. Father God made a brand new tape with righteousness and sanctification and holiness and everything that he was, and reversed it and put it back into all mankind. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So that, I think we always think that's a great way to, to picture that and explain that. Matrix reloaded. Huh? The reload? That's good. That's right. So I beheld another aspect of Jesus' redemptive work. I saw Jesus in his earthwalk ministry becoming the federal head of the human race. He took with himself the death, hell, and grave state of all humankind. And I put state because it was a false state. I saw him in obedience to his father, empty himself out of the Godhead, and drawing every man, woman, boy, and girl of the human race into himself, including everything that I talked about. He no longer was Jesus the Christ. He, he who had never experienced separation from Father God, yet because of him being the obedient one, he became very and completely separate from Father God. He tasted the death of humanity, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Furthermore, it was bestowed upon himself to stand steadfastly in his redemptive work by himself to bring up one again all that dwelt upon the earth. He did so by taking in himself the death, hell, and grave of being of the first man, Adam. Furthermore, the force Adam released died, and it was yes. all made void in him. Amen. It died, and it was made void. It's not there. We are not under the force of sin. We're not under the force of cancer, or diabetes, or arthritis, or, or uh, Any lack. Alzheimer's, uh, age, bad eyes. It's all illegal. It does not belong to us. We just believed it has, so we've allowed it to give full dominion in our life. And we've made it a power because the minute it's spoken over us, what have we done in the past? Oh my gosh. And we bowed down in fear. He swallowed it all up. Furthermore, it was bestowed upon himself to stand steadfastly in his redemptive work by himself to bring at one all that dwelt upon the earth. He did so by taking himself to death, hell, and grave of being the first man, Adam. Furthermore, the force Adam released died and was all made void in him and placed upon him as the federal head of all humanity and was exceedingly great, an exceedingly great mega punishment. That's what it said when I looked it up. Mega punishment. Why? Because it was the deaths of all and the judgment of all humanity. It was a great and mighty work. That very few people, just think of it, Robin, let me ask you, how long have you been going to church? Since I was little. Okay, can, could you stand up and tell me the six things that Jesus did right now? No. See? Mm -hmm. I knew you were ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> ignorant just means you don't have understanding. Yes. None, none of us could. I knew that was exactly what she meant. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I know you did. None of us could. When Brother Garner taught it to us, and then I began to teach at a tree of life, actually, I began to teach it at Full Gospel Assembly. But a tree of life, when we met in that little funeral home, Advantage Funeral Home on South Penn, every Sunday, I was going through crucified, died, buried, quick, and raised, and seated. That's it. And every Sunday, and I would say, who can stand up and give it to me? Nobody could. 
Next Sunday, who can tell me the six things that Jesus did? Nobody could. And finally, once I told next Sunday, I'm going to give ten dollars to the person that can do it. And somebody stood up, and they barely made it through it. <laughs> you know, it's only six words, but we've not been taught it. And I ask preachers all the time, what are the six things Jesus did to redeem us? And they don't know. And then when I say it, they'll go, oh, that? Like it's just some kind of light bread, unsubstantial, oh doesn't mean God. much at all. And that's what these seals are. We need these seals, and we still need to see them. Those of us that have been studying this since 96, we could preach six steps of the throne, but we need to see it in every picture in the Bible. And the more you see it, the more you identify with it, but more than anything, what have we been equipped to do? To be blessings to other people. Mm -hmm. We're being equipped to be priests with Urim and Thummim, Thummim, which means light on perfection. Mm -hmm. That's such a blessing to be able to do that. Yes, Donna. Uh, could you please repeat that verse that says, It is appointed unto man. It's Hebrews 9, 27, and 28. It's appointed once for man to die, then the judgment. Remember what God said to Adam? And the day that you do this, the day that you feed from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. And with God, die means no understanding of Him, cutting yourself off from His life. Now, physically, He died 930 years later. It took that long for that to cause Him to die. He should have never died. So, in other words, you separated yourself from me, you separated yourself from my life source, and so you're going to die, and then there's a judgment, and that judgment is the consequences of what you've done. God didn't do all that to them. It's the consequence of what he did. The next verse says, So Christ, actually should, should say, So Jesus offered himself once, and for those who look for him the second time, which most people think that's a rapture, will he appear without sin, which is Christ? Well, that was in the resurrection. Right? The first time he came, he took sin into himself, and he went to the cross and became human. And his resurrection was his second time, his second appearing, and it says he appeared without sin unto everlasting righteousness. And that's the second coming people are looking for. They think he's going to come back someday, Jesus physically body, judge the world, destroy a devil, and all those things. And they, because the reason they believe that is because they have no understanding of crucified, died, very quick, and raised and seated. They don't know who the enemy of God was. It was Adam. It was Adam's choice. He was the traducer, he was the hinderer, and he produced all this, and Jesus swallowed it up. So what's the traducer and hinderer today? Why is it still alive and well today on the earth today? Religion and tradition. Men choosing to add their mixture to it. The first thing they did to the Apostle Paul, the, uh, the Pharisees came to him, and uh, even some of the disciples were involved in it, and said, well, why don't we just go ahead and let him be uh, circumcised? Can't we just do a little bit of the law? Then we'll all be happy. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is all these religious leaders come together all the time and they're always trying to come up with a good way, a better way to fill the church up, a better way to make people happy. So, you know, well, Pastor, why don't you just not preach this? Would you just leave this out and just leave that out? And next thing you know, you have a mixed message. Mm -hmm. And God said, I don't want you to water it down. I want you to roast it with fire. I mean, teach the truth because the truth will make people free. But that's what they try to do is compromise, and we can't compromise it. We must yeah. teach it with truth. Yes? So the, the verse reads... It's appointed what? once for man to die, then the judgment. So Jesus offered himself once. And for those who look for the new right. creation, Christ... So he, at that point, judged... In the Garden of Gethsemane, he did he that. Judged. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he received the judgment he of the world. In the cup. In, in that cup that said he didn't want to drink that bitter cup... That cup was him becoming human. It wasn't going to the cross. And you remember in Isaiah 53, God said, I saw the travail of his soul. Well, he didn't see Jesus, the righteous man, so he saw humanity. He saw Jesus had become human, and he suffered the death of all. And God said, I'm satisfied. It's all been paid for. There is no future judgment coming anywhere. The hurricanes aren't judgment. Cyclones aren't judgment. You know, God's not going to judge the United States of America for abortions or gay marriages or lesbian marriages. Everything that's going to happen is consequences. Mm -hmm. Consequences, not judgment. You know why there's hurricanes? Because man hasn't stood up and ruled and reigned over the elements. Mm -hmm. Why sickness and disease is going on? Because we haven't stood up and said no yep. more. But we're going to, and we are. Amen? God bless you. Appreciate you.